So thank you for joining us today for the Registry Partners November 2022 CTR coding break on the topic of AJCC M coding. The objectives for today are to review the M category assignment, review clinical M components, review pathological M microscopic evidence, and review multiple distant metastases. Principles of M category assignment. The AJCC 8th edition has the coding principles on page 17 and 22 of the manual, while AJCC version 9 of the cervix uteri holds the definition on Kindle page 7 and 9. For the criteria for M category, we have the absence of cancer, which would be the MO, and involvement of sites or organs outside the local tumor area, which is M1. And a negative physical exam is the minimum criteria to qualify for CMO. We want to make sure you read over your chapter notes because details can vary by site. For example, cervix uteri has a prognostic stage group chart and stage four on it does not automatically mean distant mets. Stage 4A is for T4, NEN, and MO, while stage 4B is for NET, NEN, and M1. Here is a case example of the appendix. We have a CT abdomen pelvis, small bowel obstruction, but cannot identify the point of obstruction, a 7.2 centimeter cystic mass within the central to right hemipelvis. The liver has some hypodense areas which are suspicious for metastatic disease. The patient went on to have a partial segmentectomy, a partial omentectomy, a ileocectomy, and a peritoneal implant biopsy, which showed appendiceal adenocarcinoma, extensive metastatic low-grade mucinous adenocarcinoma. So what is the clinical TNM stage? We have CTX, PMO, PM1B, stage 4B, or CTX, PMO, PM1B, stage 4B. The answer is B, CTX, CMO, CM1B, stage 4B. We can code CM1B in this case due to clinical diagnosis without microscopic confirmation until surgery. The clinical time frame ends when therapy begins. AJCC page 14 notes clinical stage should not be changed based on subsequent information from the pathological examination of resected tissue. AJCC 8th edition clinical M classification on page 17 shows when we can code PM1. We have a microscopic evidence confirmation of a distant metastatic site during the diagnostic workup, and T and M are categorized only clinically. And we have an example where it shows the exact same for T, N, and M, clinical and pathological stage group four. These rules are also the same for path M on stage on page 22. Here we have a case example for a lung. We have a CT chest, 3.1 centimeter rounded consolidative opacity at the anterior inferior left lower lobe, abutting the diaphragmatic pleura, a one centimeter asymmetric nodular opacity at the anterior left lower lobe near the fissure, small to moderate left pleural effusion. The PET scan showed multifocal pleural-based hypometabolism, left hemithorax associated with a small to moderate sized left pleural effusion. Some of the pleural fluid appears to be loculated, findings suspicious for potential, potential pleural mets. Intense hypermetabolism mass involving the left infrahillar region. This is suspicious for a potential central primary lung cancer within left lower lobe. 
hypermetabolism, pillar and mediastinal lymph nodes suspicious for METs. The patient went to have a cytology, left pleural fluid showed positive for malignancy adenocarcinoma, and the physician note showed stage four lung cancer primary in left or lower lobe, mediastinal node mets, and malignant pleural effusion. What is the correct clinical TNM stage and what is the correct pathological TNM stage? For clinical, we have the options of CT2A, CN2, and CM1A, and B is CT2A, CN2, PM1A. For pathological, we have PT blank, PN blank, PM blank, or CT2A, CN2, PM1A. So the answer will match for clinical TNM and pathological TNM with a C, CT2A, CN2, PM1A. Without microscopic confirmation of the pleural fluid, the clinical TNM answer would include the CM1A and the TNM blank would apply for pathological. AJCC 8th edition pathological M categorization on page 22 of the manual shows when there is microscopic evidence confirming distant metastatic disease, then we categorize or code clinically M, or I'm sorry, pathologically M1, and that includes these five microscopic procedures of core biopsy, cytology from FNA, excisional biopsy, resection, and incisional biopsy. In our lung for, in our stage four lung case, PM1 was due to the positive cytology from FNA. Next, we have a coding example for a small intestine. We have a US ultrasound abdomen, right hepatic lobe, complex mass measuring up to 5.6 centimeters, 5 centimeters, which may represent primary hepatic neoplasm or metastatic disease. A CT abdomen pelvis showed 10 centimeter mass within the liver, abutting the diaphragm, suspicious for malignancy, Mild superior mesenteric adenopathy, suspicious for met METs, abnormal osseous findings, and bone scan showed findings positive for bone METs in multiple sites. The hepatic mass core biopsy was adenocarcinoma, and our comment states that the staining pattern is consistent with tumor arising from the small intestine, and then the patient expired. What is the correct clinical TNM stage? Is it CT blank, CN blank, CM1, or CT blank, CN blank, PM1? And what is the correct pathological TNM stage? Is that PT blank, PN blank, CM1, or CT blank, CN blank, PM1? The answer will be the same for clinical and pathological with a CT blank, CN blank, PM1. This case qualifies for PM1 because only one site was microscopically proven. However, metastatic, I'm sorry, microscopic evidence is not needed of both sites to apply the PM1. Here is more information regarding METs to multiple sites. This is located on the AJCC 8th edition, page 22 as well. Patients who have distant METs in multiple sites and have a cancer type where the P, where the M categories, the, I'm sorry, the M subcategories distinguish between one or more metastatic sites. Microscopic confirmation of one site is necessary to assign the higher PM subcategory. So for example, if we have a lung case that has liver and bone mets, and the liver was biopsied and positive for mets, you may assign PM1C. Each metastatic site does not need to be biopsied. We also have mets to paired organs. 
metastases to both sites of a paired organ are considered a single metastatic site. American Joint Committee on Cancer provides additional educational resources outside the manuals on their website, and that includes these five topics, and the website is at the bottom. So thank you for joining us today. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs>